Welcome back to Taco Bola Gaming. My name is Taco Bola, and we are going to continue our tutorial playthrough here in Europa Universalis 4, playing as Castile. And uh, last time, at the end of last time, uh, our king died. We got a new king with zero legitimacy. We defeated some pretender rebels and uh, took a lot of uh, damage from that. We are losing 4.64, but if we go over here, we're actually losing 7.42. Which is a lot. Um, but you'll notice that 8.64 of that is to reinforcements. So um, we can mitigate some of that if we wish. Now we do have 50.75 ducats in our treasury. So that means that we could survive for about six months or so. Um, and by the time that's done, we likely would you'd be pretty close to being fully reinforced anyway. But to save money, we're going to hold shift down and click this button. Now, if you have, if you just click it, you will lose everything. I would go down to 16 regiments, right? It would be the, the 15 I can fill in fully. And then uh, that last one was 682. And I would just lose the, the last three there. By holding down shift, you see the hold shift while clicking and to leave zero strength regiments behind. So what we can do is we can do that, and that will leave zero strength regiments, namely this one and that one. Um, and that, you can see, we already are making money. We're actually losing money still because they're having war taxes from the last month that are calculated in. But uh, this will uh, go up, and certainly we're losing less money now because we're only paying 2.25 to reinforcements, so that's something you can do. If you need the the army to come back fast, you're in the middle of a war, you're fighting you know, important people, then by all means, lose the money. Um, but if you don't need the, those forces that quickly, then uh, you know that's pretty fine. Now for legitimacy, the way we get legitimacy back is that we strengthen the government. And you can spend 100 military power, in this case it's 100 plus a little bit extra because of my corruption. And we gain 10 legitimacy. So I could spend 1,000, or in this case 1,010 military power, and get it up to 100. Also, every year it goes up due to the number of royal marriages, my power projection, etc. Um, that's all well and good. But we do have a, another military technology coming up in three years' time which is really about two and a half years, give or take, because we're in August. And I probably am going to need um, a lot of that power before we get there. So what does having low, low legitimacy do? Well, the biggest thing having low legitimacy do is or does is it increases national unrest. You see that our, our legitimacy of zero increases national unrest by two, basically, 1.98. Now, our king was just, so that lowered it back down, but we still have war exhaustion, we have overextension that raise it up, and of course the denied newborn daughter of three. So, uh, we have a national unrest of plus 2.58, which means that in a lot of provinces, particularly ones we just took, we have a relatively high unrest. You can see that um, all of those top things are the... Um, are the the national unrest that we saw the that that those modifiers there and so we are going to be facing some rebel problems we have the provincial unrest in all of this places and uh, so we do need to watch over here we have rebel factions and we need to watch that and make sure that, that doesn't um doesn't change uh too quickly that we're ready to fight whenever one might come up now, in the end of the last episode, we told this group to head over here. I'm going to go ahead and let them finish their reinforcement. Um, and then this army, or this navy, should be there to pick them up and bring them on over to fight these rebels. I also want to uh, define where I'm going on this particular tutorial. We have a Caribbean colony. I'm going to finish my Caribbean... Uh, colonial nation like i said in my opinion it's more important to just finish one colonial nation move on to the next region move on to the next region 
So we are going to finish this colonial nation here in the Caribbean, and we'll show how that looks, and then I'm going to get at least La Plata and the Spanish Main done, help you get started on that, and kind of show you the direction you want to go. My suggestion uh, for your first run should be focusing on getting Iberia and Aragon, obviously, uh, and then particularly gaining all the territory that you get a permanent claim on once you get the Spanish main. So when we finish the Spanish main mission tr mission here, which is to have a colonial nation in colonial Colombia, um, that I can show you a little bit what that kind of looks like and uh, the areas there that you will get permanent claims on. And that would be my suggestion. Just finish that. Uh, go ahead and create that colonial uh, empire. That should be where you're focusing on, is just getting this, particularly this part of the tree, the stuff that leads out of the colonial regions, done. You don't really need to worry about the naval dominance or Italy or even uh, taking over Morocco, although ideally we would take over Morocco, right? But that's kind of what I would suggest. Um, completing the Spanish main, everything that leads up to the Spanish main, and everything that follows after it. Um, but I'm not going to get all the way to there. I'm just going to get to the Spanish main and show you a little bit of those mission trees. So we're closing in on the end of where I want to go. So I will unpause. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to see where this is. Magdalena. And again, I hit the F key to get this menu up. Oh, it's here. Okay. Well, that would be 7,000 troops. Animist Zealots would be in Ternife. And, uh, I am unsure where that are. Tenefire. Oh, hey, that's way up here. Okay, well, they're, they're about to be converted. They're not going to be a thing. Now, if I wanted to, I could once again... Um, do that. So, okay, so... What happened there was the nation that used to be here, their army was also still a thing, and they came back home, which is why we left that army there. But now that it is done, I'm going to shift and consolidate them as well, just so they're not causing too many reinforcement issues. And then we're going to fight this fight. Thank you. Now I am noticing that Portugal is landing troops. Curious where they're going. So they're clearly colonizing here. Which is not great, but it's not terrible either. So once again, we're going to take this. We're going to shift consolidate for money purposes. They're going to retake this, which is great. We're going to then tell these guys to come join them. And they'll actually just walk, I guess. And uh, we're going to have the boats go up here to repair themselves. Now, the message I got here, a strategic marriage. As France goes stronger and begins to extort her power across Western Europe, those of us fortunate enough to be her neighbors have to take action. In order to counter the rising threat, we have skillfully devised a political marriage with the von Habsburgs of Austria, ensuring good relations between our countries for all time. So this is an event that Castile can get. Obviously, I have no choice. Um, but glory to the von Habsburgs, glory to Castile. So this makes us... Um, have an heir to the throne. We have Catalina as our queen, and Juan, a 335 with a strong claim, becomes the heir, and it is Juan von Habsburg. With the union of Enrique and Catalina, we have gained not only a spouse, but also a new ally. Um, yes. Okay, to everlasting friendship. And that will give us actually minus three unrest, which is good for that area. So now, if we go over here, our king is Enrique de Transmarta. So if I go to the diplomatic menu and I go to, um, I guess, political menu? 
dynastic menu. There we go. You can see that De Transmarta is over us and over Aragon because we have a personal union, so uh, our king is their king. You can also see it is over Naples. Um, so, you know, Naples has our king as well. The von Habsburgs are Austria here. It is not uncommon for the von Habsburgs to spread. Um, Austria gets personal union opportunities over Hungary and Bohemia through their mission tree as well as a few other places. And it's not uncommon for them to you know, randomly get put elsewhere. The von Habsburgs have uh, are coded into the game to be more likely to uh, show up. And one of the places they can show up because of the code is in Spain because of the event that you just saw there. So now our heir is Juan von Habsburg. So when our king dies or abdicates, our heir will go to the throne, and this will change from De, De Transmarta to von Habsburg for us and for Aragon, but not for Naples. Um, and so then we would be royally linked, dynastically linked to Austria. What that means is that uh, what happened with us in Aragon uh, could happen through an event uh, with Austria or happen to us through an event with Austria, but it's unlikely. Um, but just something to, to remember. So that dynasty will change. It's not really something that a new player has to worry strongly about, but it is something that is worth noticing, and I thought I would explain what that means. So, uh, right, Naples has an heir, so that's not a thing here. Let's take a look. Okay, Scotland to kind of explain it. There's no legal heir in Scotland. So on his death, um, a noble from the house of De Valois would succeed to the throne because he has a marriage with those three nations and um, France has the highest development, I believe it is. So their preferred prince would get placed on the throne. So then they would have, you know, Devoy uh, instead. Let's go over to, say, Georgia. In this case, they don't they don't have any allies. So it's just a Georgian noble succeeds to the throne. So uh, no, uh, no one there. In this case, um, looks like Bohemia has the largest, or Poland, has the largest uh, ally. No one is at risk of falling into a personal union. Here we go. So Ferrara, if he were to die, of course he's only 23, but if he were to die, there would be a succession war between France and Florence. Um, so because France has a Devoy and Ferrara has a De Valori, however you pronounce that, um, then there would be a personal union that would form between the largest ally uh, and the nation. The largest ally with the member, largest member of the royal of the same dynasty, excuse me, and uh, the nation there. And then the rival, the largest rival, in this case, um, Florence, or I guess that's, uh, yeah, the largest rival here, Florence, would have a chance to declare war on the largest member of the dynasty, in this case, France, um, to steal that union away. But um, I highly doubt that Florence here, this little nation here, would have a chance against France. But that's that. So we would be a von Habsburg. So one of the things that I can do with that strategically is I know that I have no legitimacy, but this person has a strong claim. So when he gets of age, when he is 15 years old, um, in theory, I could abdicate, lose 50 prestige, and go up to 100 um One hundred. 
legitimacy because he has a strong claim. Or probably 80 because I abdicated. But as there's some uh, zealots, Animus Zealots rose up very quickly. Well, that's not cool. I'm going to shift consolidate. We're going to lower ourselves down to 14 because that's the number of transports I have. And we will send them off. And I'll just grab the general. I was not watching, I guess. That's not cool. So Animus Zealots have taken control of the province. And it would appear that... I think... I think that, technically speaking, the missionary is still there. He's just not making progress because it's being sieged down. He is making progress. Ah. No, he's not, because Tenefire was, uh, was there. And uh, it's not there. So apparently I have two missionaries. Um, it's the other one. The other is making progress. This one was kicked out. Oh well. And boom. Let's go ahead and fight this fight. It'll be a nice quick fight. And so it was. We're still going to shift consolidate. And once he finishes um, taking the province back, we will send the missionary back as well. Now, we're still losing money. And I do think that um, what I'm going to do here is turn off the forts to try and save some money. And we're going to return. So that definitely means, though, that I need to keep an eye on these, particularly the Portuguese separatists, and ensure that they don't uh, they don't fire. Hey, national unrest goes down. I like that. So I'm going to move them to Lisboa so that I'm standing on the fort, just in case they fire. But hopefully they will not fire. And basically what you're going to be doing is just waiting for the colonists to form. It would also be, you know, good to have um, some uh, admin power so that you can begin to get your idea going. Let's see. Papal State's opinion of me changes. And we get stability cost as well as tolerance of the true faith. But the Papal State's opinion of Castile changed by plus 50. Tolerance of the true faith would be nice. This early in the game, trade's not overly important, but it is something. I do think that it is definitely worth here to lose the trade efficiency. Let's go ahead and see what that does to me though so i'm not actually sure yeah so i lost a little bit of money but um tolerance of the true faith means that the only province that still has unrest for the portuguese is of yero so i'm going to move up here and see if that's still the case for lisboa when the the army moves yep and so now that i have troops up here and the only one that that has any problems that's going to go down and that revolt is done so now the only ones i have to worry about are um in saraya right there and in iberus right here this unrest yeah, has been crushed. So, uh, yeah, we'll just... Actually, I'll move them here so that we have a, a full way explored. 
And then we'll move the armies back over. That will be great. So you'll notice that uh, the colony with the colonist is increasing significantly faster than the colony without a colonist. You see that is massively the deal here. And let's go ahead and just take this uh, take this idea or take the uh, technology here. Now I'm aware that I only really want to fight Portugal, maybe. Uh, I probably want to take one of these two for Colombia. And so let's actually see. This is in Colombia. Is it in the trade region of Colombia? It is in the colonial Colombia region. This is actually something that is interesting. Your colonial nation will only be as strong as you make it. So if you want your colonial nation to be able to deal with problems, you want to be have it connected together. So that's the other way to do that, right? We just find one place and then do the next one over, the next one over, so it's all connected together. The other way is if you want it to be economically strong, you put it in the centers of trade, which is what I talked about in, um, in the Caribbean, right? And then you fill it out as you can beyond that. But if you're going to do that, there's a likelihood that you're going to have to go and deal with any problems that come up, any rebels or uh, anything like that, because they're going to struggle to get their army from one place to another to another, and you, with your boats, will have an easier time of it. So that's what you need to be considering here, is whether you whether I want to have a colonial nation that's kind of all together over here, or whether I want to take an opportunity and attack these guys. Personally, I think I'm going to take that opportunity, and we're going to build a spy network on them, and I'm going to sit my armies right next to them. And I need to watch my rebels, but uh, in a few months time, um, about a year or so, we'll have uh, that taken care of. That claim taken care of, and we'll go ahead and be able to attack them. And we can, of course, claim anything in the New World because of our ideas. So that one missionary is done. We were making cores in all of the other places that had uh, any problems at all. You'll notice that legitimacy also deals with tolerance of heathens. So in these provinces that are um, not Christian, then um, that legitimacy is not only minus 91 for itself, but on top of that, the tolerance of heathens is 9.9 you know, higher as well. So it's something to consider and think about. It's also a question of, do I want to suppress them? with harsh treatment, or do I want to just move? I think I'm going to move my army over to the one that is looking like it's going to rebel. And just kind of sit, let's sit right outside of it. So we're not actually reducing the unrest, and they can form up, and then hopefully we can be there to crush it. We continue to lose money. We're rooting out corruption pretty large pace. We do have that level 2 advisor. I think I'm going to switch that to a level 1 advisor for monetary reasons. Oh wow, that, that was a cheaper advisor? Yeah, it was. I legitimately don't know why we're bleeding so much money all of a sudden. But we're going to get this. This will help. So the first idea in expansion ideas is to get a colonist. 
And what that does is that now we have two colonists. So we have a colonial maintenance goes from six to four, right? It's it's 100% for every colonist you have, and then it starts to go up for the, you know, 200%, 400%, et cetera, et cetera. So now that we have two colonists, we're allowed to have two colonies. So we're going to go back over to Havana, and we're going to send that second colonist there. If I had more money, the kind of money I was expecting to have um, and had been experiencing before we lost all of, all of the legitimacy and everything else, um, then we would actually be able to have... Um, just checking my force limit. Uh, we would actually have been able to probably start a third, because it would only have cost two additional ducats, or eight ducats total. Um, and really, as your Spain, that's where you're wanting to get. You're wanting to get the most number of colonists that you can get, which is actually four, I think. And then have that one on top of it for only four more uh, more ducats. We're losing money again. Like, seriously, what is going on? I mean, I, I guess we stop rooting out corruption to that extent? I think we're getting charged for this 46 soldiers we're losing as we march across. Not really certain, but we're going to go ahead and take the uh, tech here. And now we could um, spend some money to try and uh, convert that province. The reality is we're bleeding money. So uh, I definitely want to do only one at a time. Here, we're going to combine this army together. So that uh, colonist getting sent here, or that missionary getting sent here, will increase the unrest up to a whopping 23.2. So I have a feeling that this rebellion will fire very, very quickly. And indeed, there it has gone, and we're going to go ahead and move on in. And I have enough in my spy network to lay a claim on that province, but since I am not physically present nearby, I don't want to claim it yet. So we're going to move back up here. And I'm going to bleed the money. Now for these guys, I don't want to keep my army down here. I want my army to be up here to fight this group here, so I'm going to actually use my military power to harsh treat them and just lower them down for a little bit until I'm ready to deal with that problem. One way I could do that is to grab 14 regiments from here, but uh, I don't really want to. And we've lost morale of armies! Well, that's just great. So we will move our troops on up here. And I will then lay claim. Because if I lay claim, then this tribe has an opportunity to move. Uh, because it's only one province. So that is something to remember. But I definitely do not want to actually declare war until um, I'm right next to them. Because their army has a chance to run away, and so I want to be kind of surrounding them so they can't run away. They have nowhere to run. We can defeat their army, and then it won't become rebels that I have to go chase down. That's the goal. And you'll notice that this is a second one that I will have conquered from somebody. However, I have already converted this one to Catholic, so um, in theory... I could take another one because that is Catholic. It's not um, the right culture, but it is at least Catholic. 
And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit the split key, and then I'm going to hit the split key twice again. And we're going to just go um, in all four of these provinces here. When I was doing that, I did... Um, I'm going to just lose the five prestige. Um, if you hit the V key, it will deselect the bottom one. And so I just kind of moved everyone along until I finished. And we're going to claim... And I'm going to declare war. They don't have any allies. And we're going to launch in. From there, I can take my 14 boats and move them over here so that we have a blockade eventually. And again, they have nowhere they can go. That's the goal. We take out their army, and that is done. This should be a level 1 fort. It is, so we're going to um, take these off. We're going to move them to our colony up here, so they have a chance to reinforce. The uh, horses will cost us a little bit extra money until they're finished reinforcing. And uh, our colony in Santiago has become self-sufficient. So let's count 1, 2, 3... Four. Okay. So let's find another center of trade. Let's go ahead and do it here, I think, in Banny. Now, I'm aware that there are some people here, but I'm going to take a chance and say that they're not going to attack because they are not that aggressive. Well, actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to tell you to head over here. Go there and just rest over there. And so that will be a fifth uh, colony in co Colonial Caribbean, and that will give us a colonial nation, which is what we want. Then we'll move on to uh, the next one down the mission tree, which is the rest of Colombia. We are making a lot of money now. This is in part because of the war taxes that are raised. But, um, you know, that, that is very, very good to have that much land, or that much is done. And that's the other part, is we weren't paying for the colony yet. And so again, we're just going to keep these colonists uh, in the actual colonies, and it'll be okay. Once again, recognize that um, Portugal is attempting to do things, so we do need to worry about that. Portugal does not have a truce with us, so we most likely could um, declare war on them. So yeah, this is no problems, standard stuff that we just got done with, and we're going to claim it, or core it up. And I'm going to take my transports here. And I will end this episode here. I hope you have liked the series so far as we begin to wrap up. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe down below. And I'll see you next time.